Welcome back to Girls Coded Academy. This is the second video of our Scratch series where we will further add on to the name animation we made in the last video. So if you haven't made a name animation yet, go ahead and go back to the part one of this so you can keep up and follow along with us in this video. Anyways, it's Juliet here and let's dive in. So before we add on, I just wanted to review what we've already done. So for the J, we have it so it rotates and for the whole duration of the program, when the green flag is clicked. For you, we have it gliding around to random places on the screen for the whole duration of the program. For L, we have L moving up, down, down, then back up for the whole program. We have I changing colors for the whole program. We have E changing to mosaic, um, getting more and more mosaic. Um, for the whole duration of the program, and we have T getting bigger, then smaller, then smaller again, then bigger. So let's remember how we ran it last time. Press the green flag. Okay. So you see here now when we end the program, the letters are all over the place. We have I here, U is nowhere where it should be, and so when we run it again, it's nowhere near where it started. So what I wanna do is create starting points for each letter. So before we enter this loop where it spins forever, I want the J to be, straighting, to be sitting straight up. So that can be point in direction 90. So now when we click on this, it'll point uh, straight up. And we want this to happen every time the green flag is clicked before it starts spinning. Let's go over here and just put it right above the forever block. We want the U to start next to the J before it enters the forever loop. So a cool thing is if we look at this block, when I drag the U back to the J, the position that's currently at will update to the position here. So you can just drag this block out and put it above the forever loop. So now it'll go to this position before it enters um, this loop where it glides to random positions. Now we click on the green flag. Go again and press it again see how it starts from that position okay now let's go to the L let's put it back we want L to start next to the U so same thing we want to put the L in right there see how it updates here and drag that block out with its updated location I think I just changes color so we don't really have to um, change its location or its position but we do want it to start at the color that it was originally. So we can go back over here, clear graphic effects, and I'll just go back to the eye. So we'll just go, which it was originally red. Let's go back up here, clear it. E is fine. The T is huge, and we wanna make sure that starts back at 100% of its, of its original size. So let's go back in, set size to 100. So when we press the green flag, it'll start back where it was supposed to be. Okay. One thing I want to do now is a really cool use of this event block. When space key is pressed, you can drop down and click whatever key you want. So one thing that I want to do is have each letter be controlled by its corresponding letter on the keyboard. If you have a name with two of the same letters, maybe you can um, pick a different key for the second letter. But luckily I have a name where each letter can correspond with a letter on the keyboard that matches it. So for the so for the T block, instead of the forever block being underneath the green flagged, I'm gonna move it over and put it under this and I'm gonna click down and go over to the T. So now when T is pressed, it'll start changing its size. So let's see what that means. So I click the green flag, the T is currently in, it's 100% size, so it's not too big, not too small. Now when I press the T key, it starts getting bigger and getting smaller and then getting smaller again and getting bigger. And that's controlled by when I press the T key. And I want that to happen for every letter. So over for E, we're going to undrag the forever loop from the green flag. We're gonna pull out this when space key is pressed, click down, find the E, which is over here, and attach it to this. 
So now when I press the green flag, E will stay the same until I press the E key, which I'm gonna do right now. E, and see how it's highlighted now, and now the mosaic of the E begins. The same thing for I, unhinge the forever block, pull out a when space key is pressed, click down to the I, and attach it. For the L, do the same thing, unhinge the forever loop, pull out the when space key is pressed, change it so when L is pressed. For the U, do the same thing, unhinge, pull out the space key press block, go down to the U, like this, the J, do the same thing, unhinge, pull out the space key pressed, click on the U, I'm sorry, the J, well, I can't even spell my own name. <laughs> okay, the J. Now let's see what happens when we press the green flag after we updated all of these when J key pressed. So right now, all of the green flag blocks have been operated. So J is straight up, L is back to position, T is the normal size, U is back here. So when I press the J block here, they'll begin to spin. Go back to U, when I press the U block, U will begin to bounce across the page. I'm gonna go over to L. L will start going up and down. And the order of how you press doesn't matter. So I can click on the T now and see how now T is starting and now it's shrinking, but I and E are still the same. Go over to L. Click on the I, see how the I blocks are now running, starting to change color. Click on E, and the mosaic starts happening. So now each sprite is con controlled by a key on the keyboard. Okay. Now I want to add some. Now I just clicked on the green flag again and the, and the red thing to uh, the red stop sign just to have it all lined up again. Okay. Now I want to have some fun and add some sounds. So I want each letter to have a, a unique sound that plays when we press on the key. So let's start with J. Let's go over to sounds. Let's go over to choose a sound. And I'm gonna look at the um, hmm, animal sounds. And let's have it moo. Okay, now go, we can go back over to the code. And now that we added moo to our library, we can go to sound. And we want it to play sound, we click down, moo until done. So we want it to play the sound and then start spinning. So let's see what that means. So I'll press the green flag, press J. So you see how it played the, the moo sound and then started spinning. So that's what I want for J. Let's go over to you, do the same thing. Let's add a new sound, go to sounds, choose a sound and let's have it play a zoop sound. Now it's in our little library. We go over here, click down, play Zoop. Let's go over to L, go over to sounds. I like the pop sound, I'll let you guys hear it. Kind of fun. So I'll have it just play sound pop that was already in our library. Go over to I, go to sounds, let's add a new sound. Let's have it play, hmm. Maybe a boing sound. So I'm gonna go over here, play sound, boing. Let's go over to E. Okay. And let's go to sounds. Hmm. Maybe we'll do, what's a fun sound? Maybe let's do a alert sound. Okay, and play sound alert. Let's go over to T. I like the animal sounds. Let's go over and add some more animal sounds. Yes. Jungle frogs, for sure. Oh, that's kind of long. And I want something that's quick so you can get right to the, the movement. So let's add another sound. Um, maybe a, a ba. Okay. Let's go over here, play sound, we'll have it ba. Okay, now let's see what we just did. Everything is back in the line. Press the U key. Press 
the L key. Press the T key. Press the I key. Press the key. So you could see how they all played their unique sound after I pressed their corresponding letter on the keyboard before they started their animation. So that's all I want to do with the letters. Let's just have it go back to the, their lined up position. Now let's play with the background. So let's click over to backdrops this stage. Just click on the backdrop we have. And right now it just plays the sound. Now I want to have something that can control the background um, with a certain key being pressed. So let's just click out here. Let's have the space key just stay the same. And if we go over to looks, we can do a lot of things with the background. We can have it change color, which I want to use. I also want it to, to do a fun effect. So I want it to maybe whirl. So as it goes on, it'll just get more and more whirled. And I want to put those two together. Um, so let's go here, back to the beginning. And now when space key is pressed, it'll Whirl and it'll change the color. And I want this again to happen for the whole duration of the program. So let's go back over here. Now let's see what happens when I press the space key. Now that's really fun. If this is too too fast for you, we could also again put in our friend the weight block. And we're gonna press space and see how it goes more slowly. You can even make it, you know, 0.4 seconds or something. Or 0.2. So it happens more slowly before it repeats itself. But I think that's so fun. Okay, now let's put it all together. Let's show all of it together in the full screen. Okay, here we go. Okay. So that's all I have for this video today. Great job everyone with the name animation. I hope this second part of it um, showed you a little bit more about how to further animate your name and use the different uh, start blocks. So they correspond with the letters and how to edit the background. Next video, we're going to explore Scratch with a new project. So I'll see you next time. Hey, it's Juliet from Girls Code and Academy. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.